It's time for a mortal behaviour with the eighth. Andrew Johns, nice to see you. Hello. Hey, congratulations, bit of knuckle action. Little Alice, dad for the third time. Yeah. How's it been? Emotional day yeah. for one of us, for the dad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, one of the best days of my life. Awesome. Sensational. That's cool. Well done. Just that big, just like that. Tiny. Getting me all clucky. Mm. Let's rip into it. Uh, you've been learning a lot lately. Uh, Finals football. Mm. What did you get out of the first week? Four cracking games. You have to score points to win the grand final this year. I think yep. the teams are throwing the ball around. The referees are staying out of the, um, the contest, letting the game flow. Thank goodness. And they're using the ball. Uh, nearly 60 points scored in the South Melbourne game, which is unlike the Storm. Normally they just defend. But I think the game is going in another cycle at the moment. It's going to a really attacking phase. And uh, yeah, you'll have to score, I think, more than 20. Two twenty-four points to win the comp this year. Okay, like it. Um, most underrated player from the weekend, Cam Murray. Oh. I think he's a real. Oh, I think he's a rep player of the future. Still only twenty. Uh, it looks quite small in the field. Still next to him in the shed. He's well over six feet. A um, lot of skill, a lot of speed over the advantage line, and, and great footwork. Souths use him as a setup play, so he go. He'll go the line, and then Reynolds and Cook and those players play off him because he gets a good play of the ball. Love to see him mix his game up with a bit of pre-line passing or offload, but a real player of the future, rep player for sure. Is he on your man crush list? Yeah. That Just really behind Jack. Jack Cavellan is still safe. Yeah. For now. Hi, Cam. <laughs> the battle between two four, uh, players that have switched teams on Friday night, Cronulla and Penrith, Maloney, Moylan. Mm. Are you looking forward to this one? I am looking forward to this one. I thought Maloney was sensational last week. A few barbs been thrown. I think Paul Gallant's thrown a barb. Yes, it's, uh, Maloney just wasn't the player that they wanted to be, yeah. to be in 17. It's so. nice. It's nothing better than hate in rugby league, which is good. A bit more spice and a bit, a bit of rivalry. Um, so hopefully they come together on the field, Maloney and Moylan. Yeah. <laughs> Handbags at 10 paces. <laughs> That's too. Oh, I'm not one. <laughs> Jamie got up. Mummy. Too good. Uh, <laughs> that's a really good uh, wrap up of it, too. Yeah. Saturday night, ANZ Stadium, Dragons and the Bunnies. You talk yeah. about rivalries. The two big Englishmen, Big Sammy and Big Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Head to head. They'll go at each other again. Uh, James Graham, what a player he's been. He's yeah. played nearly 500 games in Super League and NRL and test matches. Yeah, he's a warrior. Uh, they'll come together for sure. There'll be blood spilt, and then at the end of the game, they'll probably go and share a pint together. Yep. I think South win this one, win well. Dragons, great last week against Brisbane, but to win these big games, you need your best players on there. You need them to be fit. No Widdop, um, no Vaughan. Um, so yeah, it's going to be tough for them. All right, Russell Crowe doing his best to spruik that matchup too, being the big bunnies man of the year. Do you have any Hollywood star power to plug the Knights back in the day? For... No, maybe Silverchair. Silverchair, yeah. The Strumming their guitar. Maybe the CEO of Henny Penny. There's, used to be Henny Penny right near me in Merriweather. I used to love it. I used to love these chicken buns with gravy, plenty of salt. Uh, James Graham, the head knock last mm. week. Uh, we're hoping to see him out there, but he's had a lot of them. Mm. And these consecutive knocks, how much does it worry you for him yeah, in particular? It does long term because we've seen what can happen in the NFL and boxing. You know, it's, you know there's, well, there's arguments for and against saying that it can bring on dementia and, and these sort of um, illnesses. Uh, but I've got to applaud the NRL, the stance they have now, that, you know, those protocols, if someone's knocked out, they're off straight away. Players have to be, have to be protected from themselves. Uh, but the thing is with boxing, if you get knocked out, you can't fight for three months. So uh, I don't, that won't, that's quite drastic. But um, I have full faith in the club doctors that they would look after their players. But it is a worry for James. Yeah, and he's always that player saying, I'm not coming off so not hard. Coming. Yeah. He's a warrior. Never wants to come off. Uh, the Dragons and the Bunnies, the winner of that match takes on the Roosters in the mm. prelim. No Latrell. Is mm. it all over for the Roosters? No, it's not all over for them, but it's a huge out because when Latrell gets the ball on that Roosters side, you know, the opposite uh, edge defence, every player gets worried. It's not only his opposite centre. It's the winger who's got to worry about him. It's the half inside and then it's the back rower, all sort of stressing about the strike of Latrell. Um, and also Dylan Narp in the middle. So that's it. It's a huge out. He's probably the, the most potent strike player in rugby league in the world, Latrell. And you all know what a fan I am of him, but huge out. Uh, big story this week, Josh Dugan, quite emotional at a press mm. conference, saying he fought, he's fought really hard to change that public perception, but it's just, it's not doing any good. Negativity sells papers. Is 
Josh Dugan a victim, or does he deserve the reputation uh, that he's got? Well, a bit of both. Yeah, we've, you know, I put my hand up, done stupid, dumb, stupid things when I was younger, and I think Josh has also. But Josh is now a father and understands his place in the world a lot better. I'm sure if, if he could turn back time, he wouldn't do the silly things he's done. And I totally get it. Uh, and until you're, until you're front and centre, and you're on the front of that paper, and you're leading the news, and people are talking about you, you go out in public and you hear your name getting whispered out there, Josh Dean, you've got to be there. You don't know the pressure it puts under. What, what pressure it puts you under. And it was really tough to watch Josh. He was really raw. He stripped right back. You see how emotional and how much it affects him. Um, and I understand it, I've been there myself, but it was my own fault, I don't stupid things. But that's a part of growing up, you learn from your mistakes. But, you know, he's trying to turn it around, so I, I think it comes on the club. Look, the players won't go to a, a children's hospital and ring up you know, Phil Rothfield and say, oh, I went to children's hospital. It's up to the club, it's up to the media people in the club or the CEO to have the relationship with the media people to ring up and say, you know, Player X done this today, or he's doing this, or he's trying to raise money for this uh, sick child or sick person, so it's up to the club. But I can understand where Josh is coming from. And is it louder than ever before because of social media? Ben Hunt saying that you know it's had an effect on him. You, you, is it more intense, and how do the players deal with that? Is it the Freddie way? You turn your phone off, don't read yeah. it. Is, is that, is it's it that easy long term? It's not practical because it's a different generation. They're addicted to the social media. It's, it's an outlet, it's an escape from reality. Um, it's a safety net when they're in a, a social situation. If they feel, aw feel awkward, they can go to their phone to escape that. And unfortunately, at the moment, social media is part of their world. Um, they're educated about it, but it's, it's a part of their, their world. It's a part of their escape, so they just can't turn it off. It's sort of hard to understand, really. Get your really. CEO hat on. Week two. Yep. Talking to footy. Some of the matchups, their beauties. If you're the chief executive officer at a club, are you signing in their current state? A current state. Current state. So whoever they are, <laughs> Josh Dugan or Tyrone Peachy? I'll get Tyrone Peachy, but I hope Josh, Josh Dugan doesn't see this. Yeah. That game more upset. Yeah. Matt Moylan or James Maloney? Come down and give you a cuddle. Uh, James Maloney. Okay. So, like Gusty, who made that decision. Matt Pryor and Regan Campbell-Gillard. Regan Campbell-Gillard. Paul Gallen or James Fisher-Harris? Current. current. Well, um, if I was CEO, I'd like to sign Paul Gallon because if his legs would be shorter than mine, I'd be the second sausage dog in the club. Take the pressure. Uh, who was the other fellow? Uh, I'll go Fisher Harris. Yeah. He's got plenty of miles left in those legs. It certainly does. Alex Johnston or Matt Dufty? Alex Johnston. All right. Uh, what about the two halves, Adam Reynolds and Ben Hunt? Ooh. Adam Reynolds, because of his goal kick. Good call. Uh, George Burgess and James Graham. George. And now, Angus Crichton and Tarek Sims. I reckon you've got a different answer to what you would have had at halfway through yeah. the season. Tarek was unbelievable last week. One of the great individual performances in the semi-final. I'll go Angus Kite. All right, sticking solid. I like that. Anything else bouncing around in the, the head of the eighth? No, i just looking forward to unbroken sleep. When, when's that? Two years yeah, time. I was going to say. Yeah. How are those nappies going? Y yep. It's a whole new world. <laughs> it certainly is. Brave new world. Thank you, Joey. That is immortal behaviour.